point meeting that that would be so. Yeah. I don't necessarily need to stay on, but uh, we would love for you to stay on. Thank you. July and August is weird for the county commission because I think they have one month off. There's yeah, one meeting in July the 13th, and then uh, the second Tuesday in August. Okay. So it's just less meetings. So sometimes they take bumps the board appointments. I'm going to call to order the uh, meeting of the uh, of the land conservation. Uh, and uh, you uh, have before you an agenda, a, a revised agenda, um, as compared to what was emailed out. Uh, uh, what? Like only yours is revised. Oh, only mine is revised. Okay, thank you very much. Annotated. Annotated. Oh, annotated. Very yeah. good. Thank you. <laughs> um, so, uh, with that, um, please review the agenda that we have. and. Uh, if there are any additions to that agenda, or uh, I need a motion to approve it. Can't take any motions yet. We don't have a quorum until uh -huh. Les shows up. No, we do. No, we do. Six. Oh, cool. Yeah, we do. We do. So I got, <laughs> a, real, I got a real quick question. Uh, it's because of vacancies. You have a different agenda than us? Uh, it is the same agenda, but it's annotated with, uh, so I know who is coming up to talk regarding the Lime Rock Mines. Okay, that's, so we can approve what we have. Yes. All right. Yes. Uh, I need a motion to approve. I move to approve uh, the agenda for June 24th. Second. Okay. Yes. Uh, uh, any further uh, discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those like sign. Thank you very much. Uh, we have the minutes from the May 27th uh, meeting. Uh, and. I trust you had a chance to uh, review those. Um, they're fairly, uh, fairly clear. However, uh, you may not find something to your liking. But uh, I, if you, uh, what I need is a motion to approve the minutes as presented of the May 27th Land Conservation Board meeting. I move to approve the minutes for the May 27th, uh, 2021 meeting. Thank you, Jason. Do we need a, I need a second? I'll second. Okay, Susan, second. Uh, any further discussion regarding the uh, the minutes of May 27th? Hearing none, we'll call the vote. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those like sign. Uh, minutes have been approved. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, we're moving now into old business. And old business consists of our um, evaluation of the High Springs Lime Rock Mines LLC. And if you recall, we had um, some spirited conversation about the property, uh, had a good presentation uh, by Andy. Uh, however, we're going to start again with uh, the uh, resuming discussions regarding this particular property. And Andy is going to give us a uh, overview. All right, great. Thanks, Russ. Um, we start with a, a opening slide, not from the Lime Rock Mine property, but um, this is one of our Florida burrowing owls. We recently, this past weekend, hosted the annual um, Audubon June Challenge burrowing owl field trip at the Watermelon Pond Preserve Metzger Tract. We had 48 people attend, I think, happily, finally joining into some outdoor field trips. Um, and uh, 14 owls were observed, so it's a good number. Um, it's nesting season, so quite a few of those were chicks. Um, so, but it's always fun to talk about one of our imperiled species that's doing well on an Alachua County Forever Preserve. Um, I am going to revisit a um, handful of the slides that we looked at in the um, full evaluation given last month for the High Springs Lime Rock Mines. Uh, property, just to refresh everyone's memory and for those that were not here last month. Um, the property is 316.97 acres in size. It's one parcel under three ownerships, and um, those ownerships represent a collective of approximately 17 different families and members from a property that's been owned by one primary family for um, several decades. The property is um, 
not within one of the Alachua County Forever Project areas. Um, it's also not within one of the strategic ecosystems. However, um, it does fall within an outstanding Florida Springs priority focus area for Hornsby, Treehouse, and Columbia Springs, which are located to the west along the Santa Fe River. The property received a 5.07 score in the matrix evaluation process. Um, that, that scoring was conducted um, using the approach that's utilized for all properties, which um, is with an intent of a property being um, moving into a uh, status as a county preserve if it is acquired. Subsequent discussions have indicated that potentially the pathway for this property could be for more uh, directed recreational use. And um, given that, the matrix, the way it's set up and the criteria that are included in the matrix uh, do not directly overlap with recreational use as an outcome for a site, like as the primary outcome for a site. So um, that would likely result in a different score for the property, potentially a slightly lower score for the property, um, given that potential use, if that's the pathway that the, the property ends up going forth on. Um, and that's merely a reflection of the um, program and the matrix as they are designed with a focus on um, conservation of natural areas and intact habitat. As you may recall, this site is um, a lime rock mining site that is primarily finished with the lime rock mining component of its use. Um, it has five buildings on site, and those are all associated with the lime rock mining operation. There are scale houses, an old mobile home office, pole barn and shed that are all sort of utility buildings and structures associated with that ownership. The Alachua County property appraiser um, just value is $108,000. $940, or approximately $344 an acre, and the total value is $124,870, or $394 an acre. And the landowners do not have an asking price set at this time, but I will um, mention that Linda Sodek, who is the um, basically the, the leader <laughs> of, the, of the landowner, she's the one that coordinates um, the ownership of the property and the three different LLCs that are the three owners. Um, she is here and she's available to answer questions if you have questions um, you, that you would like to present to her. The property is, is nominated as a fee simple acquisition. Uh, if you look at the map, you'll see that the, the red block um, is the Lime Rock Mine um, property and the Santa Fe River is the blue line that's the county border on the north side of the county. That's the blue line running around the north side of the, of the county. Um, the property is approximately three miles from the Santa Fe River and similarly approximately three miles from Mill Creek Preserve, just northeast of the city of High Springs. This is a, um, a current aerial photo of the property. Again, as a reminder, 316 acres, and the majority of the footprint of that property is um, surface water. They're, they're essentially quarry, quarry lakes or lime rock um, pits that ha are, have water filling them up to 50 feet deep in the deepest ones, and maybe approximately 30 or less feet deep in the more shallow um, lakes. So 142 acres of surface water. Um, and there is a, the depth would indicate an intersection and the, and the constant source of water would indicate an intersection with the Florida and aquifer. Um, the edges of those open water areas are um, in some cases fairly steep cliffs and in some cases um, lower shelves like plateau shelves along the edge of the water. All of the uplands that you see on the property with the exception of the central east side, our um, overburden that has been re-sculpted within the property, so all those things that look like uplands were at one point mined, and then the soil, is, the overburdened soil has been moved back in place to create um, what, what is now the upland footprint. 
the there is a approximately five acre area on the sort of central the central northeast side of the property that is a historic cemetery. And I believe that we may hear some comments on that cemetery um, by one of the attendees at the meeting um, sh shortly later. Um, the, mining, the mining on the site began in the 1950s and um, is continuing today only with some remaining stockpiles in these two white footprint areas that you see in the central north part of the property. Um, and that's probably good for that. If you look at the context in the surrounding landscape, you'll see that it's a mixture of some intact forested habitat and, and um, agricultural uh, land use. The largest landowner to the south, um, Ms. Sodak, the landowner, did um, compile a, um, a look at the parcel uh, ownership by Mr. Um, Sensmeer. And it's, he owns approximately 500 acres. That's the wooded area immediately south of the lime rock mine property, and then the agricultural area south of that. Additionally, looking to the east, the, the larger landowners, um, uh, the Morrises and the Bernardo Trust, represent another approximately 100 acres coming up to Interstate 75, um, which, as we all know, is its own footprint. Um, uh, this is just a historical um, image to give a sense of about the time when mining on the south end of the property transitioned up to the northern end, northern end of the property. This is a 1999 aerial infrared aerial image. And some photos of the, the main feature on the site that I think the family has enjoyed and that represents the impetus behind the nomination, which are the open surface waters or the, the mining quarry lakes. You can see the upper image in this case includes um, a little bit of the spoil. You can see that pile is actually quite large compared to the equipment next to it. The upland vegetation is mostly, it's a primarily dominated by a grass species that I don't personally recognize, but is not, to my knowledge, a um, significant non-native invasive grass. And then the tree species on site, probably the most widespread is cedar, which tends to do well on mining sites, but there's also a fair component of um, saltbush and wax myrtle, sweet gum, laurel oak, water oak, a, a mix of species that are early colonizers on, on sites that have a history of disturbance. A significant footprint of the property is level. Um, it's not, if you've looked at other um, mining sites, you'll note that sometimes they can have a lot of hills and peaks and um, extreme slopes. And while there are some slopes on the property, a significant footprint of what you look at as the, as the upland area is, is fairly plateau-like, fairly level. Um, some in images from the, the, up, the Upland Hardwood Forest area, which is also the footprint of the historic cemetery. Um, walking around in that area, um, myself and the individual that assisted with the evaluation found approximately 17 grave markers, uh, the oldest being from 1912 and others much more recent in the 2000s. Um, and the mining operation seemed to go basically right up to the edge of that cemetery. There is still a fair stockpile of lime rock on site um, that the company that is, has the mining lease is removing at, at a slow pace um, to keep the site active. And it, that is in part because of the potential for some reclamation requirements that may be on site. Um, if mining activity or when mining activity ceases. The Florida DEP has indicated to EPD staff that a change in ownership might um, prompt the reclamation activities or reclamation requirements to be more safety driven, focused on keeping, um, keeping folks away from, if I can get to a, away from potentially um, risky edges or steep areas where there might be a fall 
and fencing for site security. Um, the age and the, the type of permitting of the mine itself um, indicates that it may not have full, um, there, there's no wetland um, mitigation requirements, um, and additionally there may not be habitat restoration mitigation requirements. It's primarily safety based. Again, there's some infrastructure on site. This is primarily at the north end of the property. Um, scale house, an old stockpile of lime rock, um, a pole barn with some equipment storage. There's an equipment maintenance pad that has some um, chemical staining on it, a diesel tank, a straight gasoline tank, an old decrepit, um, I think was an office trailer. And again, this is an overview, visual overview of the site. Um, Ms. Sodek has provided us with a... Andy, before you move on, could you, could you clarify something for me? Yes. When you say safety uh, reclamation, do they have to go in and like level out the, the edges? I mean, what, what does that mean? It, from what we understand, it could mean that, that there couldn't be a requirement for grading to make the, the transition from ground into water more gradual, but more likely barriers like fencing would be the, the indicated reclamation or, or signage to manage people's awareness of safety risk for steep drop-offs. That, that is definitely not something that there's a defined set of requirements that's really written down for, so to say more than that would be speculation. Um, uh, so Ms. Sodek has provided a video that I believe, hopefully, screen sharing, oh, well, it says my screen sharing is paused, so let me see if I can figure that out. Okay, there's nobody in the waiting room. Okay, so I'm going to share. Okay. drone footage of the property um, that Ms. Sodek has provided and requested be shown. So you can look at um, obviously large large swaths of open water in these lakes and again you know as, as much as 50 feet deep. The wooded tree line is basically the property boundary for the most part when you're looking at this, the, the woods. <coughs> Which way are we facing now? West. Okay. In this case, this view is all interior. You can see the cedars and you can see some of the topography um, in, in some of the steeper areas. That's where some of the more active mining is still occurring. And then that's the, that's the sort of central area um, where, where the mining operation is still um, storing equipment and, and some materials. The northern Quarry Lake here. And that's probably the largest lime rock stockpile in that location. This is the boat ramp that the family has utilized for boating access to the water, and they've camp had a camping site in that location. Um, in the last month's presentation, I mentioned that, that um, one of the family members had indicated there had been some flooding on the site after one of the hurricanes, and um, Minnesota corrected me to understand that that was after those four hurricanes came across the peninsula. And, um, 2004, and it was just brief excess water on site, but there is no long-term um, flooding issue on the site. Let's see, one is a spoil island that has been left on site. Sort of see through the water there, see the structure of the material below.
additional aerial overview of the site. Um, so, I'm going to continue screen sharing just um, in case anyone would like to see one of the images from the slideshow, but um, the, the one other update, so the, um, you gave a staff direction at the end of the last meeting um, to reach out to other potential partners that might have interest or potentially um, the ability to partner in either acquisition or management of the site, um, and much of that discussion was focused about um, recreational use. Um, uh, I did have a conversation with the Florida Park Service about a site that they have that's somewhat similar to ask them about how they have handled it with regards to restoration of natural communities on site, because a couple of you did have questions about that. And essentially, their experience has been that um, it, it exceeds um, their funding and staffing levels for their site to undertake active restoration of the, um, the sites on the site that they are managing. And so they, they are primarily focusing on just site security. And in that case, um, their, their, their focus is really just on protecting the potential exposure um, of in that instance, the Itchitoki River, to additional contaminants in, um, that might enter through the surface water on the property that they own. But, but their experience with restoration has been um, that it has been um, extremely challenging and cost prohibitive for them to date. I would speculate for us, for the Alachua County Forever Program, to, to answer the question that you posed previously, that we would probably have a similar experience in terms of restoration of natural communities on site. Um, however, you know, that is the focus of the Alachua County Forever and the Alachua County Office of Land Conservation and Management um, program is, is natural community restoration. And so, you know, that's a system of, you know, picking targets that are achievable um, within re reasonable levels. Um, our focus is not as much on recreation, and so we've also reached out to some, some folks that can comment on recreational potential. Thank you, Andy. That was uh, w well done. I see that Charlie, I believe, is going to uh, discuss uh, uh, some of the uh, questions that we asked of uh, potential uh, partners, I believe. And uh, thank you very much, Charlie. Yeah, Mr. Chair, um, appreciate it. This would be unlike um, any property that we've acquired um, through Alachua County Forever. So uh, I think you all rightly had some questions about um, potential management. And um, in addition to um, Andy reaching out to Florida Park Service, um, I reached out to the uh, University of Florida School of Forests, Fisheries, and Geomatic Sciences. Um, and I think probably the best thing for me to do is just read the email response that I got, so you all get the flavor of it here. Uh, this is from um, um, Red Baker, the director of the, the school. I had reached out to both him and Kyla Renson, who is the head of the fisheries uh, program there. Um, Red says, uh, Charlie, we've reviewed your email and attachment as requested and really see few opportunities for us to take, a, um, take on management of such a property. I would offer that we have two faculty who may be of assistance in an advisory capacity. Uh, Dr. <coughs> Chuck Chitra is a pond management specialist who advises on everything from fish to weed management. And of course, you know Taylor Stein, who may be able to advise on recreational aspects and plans for the property. It looks like a very interesting property and opportunity. Um, we're just not in a position uh, to currently take on such a project. Um, I also reached out to the City of High Springs um, and spoke a couple of times with Damon Messina. He's their uh, Parks and Recreation Director. Uh, he has um, spoken with their uh, City Manager and uh, he provided me with, with uh, this message. It says, Charlie, per our discussion regarding Lime Rock Mines in Alachua County High Springs, we as staff are in full support of this project. 
uh, due to not discussing uh, with our, county, our city commissioners, we cannot speak on their behalf. However, we have no reservation with the county and city staff having those discussions at one of our meetings. From a resident standpoint and someone working in parks and recreation, the landscape is remarkable with plenty of upside for recreational activities, programs, and events. Uh, please feel free to reach out uh, for further discussion. So he indicated in, in our conversations, of course, that you know they're a, a small staff and they've got a number of uh, projects underway. Um, they would be very interested in partnering with the county in some way on this project, but it would take them some time to work through some other projects before they could really um, uh, pay much attention to this one. So those are the two contacts I've made. Um, then in addition, I'll go ahead and, and lead into uh, Jason Maurer. Uh, we reached out to Jason, who is on the county staff. He's the uh, Parks and Open Space Manager, and he's with us via Zoom, and he can uh, um, talk about you know, his experience on the, on the property and what parks may be able to bring to it. Thanks, Charlie. I'm, I'm happy to be here. Um, I think there's a lot of opportunity. Okay, I just we think you, Jason. Um, you know, we have to look at it from the, the uh, reality of. Hold on one uh, second. That's, that's an issue on our end. I'm going to, going to um, hang up and redial in on our um, speaker phone here, which should reconnect the audio. I apologize. We really need to that to happen. One moment. Jason, try try again now. Uh, can you hear me? Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Can, can you hear me now? Yes. Yep, we got okay. you. All right. Um, so thank you, Charlie. Uh, thank you, everyone, for letting me come and speak. Um, so I think there's a lot of opportunity at the property. I think there's a lot of cost involved, though, that we have to be realistic about. <clears throat> I worked up some numbers and provided those for Charlie. I'm not sure if, um, if they were included in your packet. Uh, my suggestion would be, uh, from our perspective, would be is to put out for proposals for a concessionaire. If we were to ha have the property and manage it, is to have a concessionaire that would be the one on site that could rent canoes, kayaks. Um, there's opportunities for trails. There's opportunities for mountain biking. If we, depending on what we want to allow on the property as well, but also with the stipulation of you know, hey, you know, we can't have any. Uh, it would have. To be electric motor only on the ponds uh, or canoe and kayak only no gasoline uh, we could do zip lines uh, canopy bridges those kind of things um, i think there is opportunities for those um, but i think it would be better for a concessionaire that could see that with a long-term lease and, and brunt, uh, take the brunt of the fiscal portion of that but uh, i did work up some numbers on the sheet that if we were to take it over and run it uh, um, let me pull that up here, actually, so I can see. Okay, so uh, we are they're circulating a sheet with with your figures on it. Okay, great. So I think we came up with uh, like FTEs. I would need two full time staff, new staff, and a half time employee to make sure we staff seven days a week. We would need summer seasonals, obviously operate. 
operational supplies and things like that. So we'd be looking at about $333,000 a year to operate just for staffing and maintenance and upkeep of fencing, um, the grounds, you know, keeping everything in good repair, uh, canoes and kayaks, you know, we would have, have to buy those supplies. So everything that would come along with that. And this is if we were to try to do this ourselves. And that's, that's why I'm leaning more towards having a concession here because of the, the cost involved. Um, my biggest uh, concern that I have that I would that I just want to be upfront is I'd rather be be high, but I think on the the grounds improving renovation and building an office and bathrooms. I said we're looking at probably a million dollars of Wild Spaces money just to have the place up and, up and running and in good repair uh, to bring the public in, and that would just be doing road improvements trail you know creating basic nature trails um and we'd have to bring in a new office building because i after annie and i talked i have renovating the existing trailer but she said that's probably not going to be worth the investment so we'd probably end up having to spend more money to buy our office building um prefabricated restrooms are running about two hundred thousand themselves those are actually self-contained uh large tanks you just come and pump them out so they wouldn't need to be hooked up to septic or sewer or anything of that nature so that would help that would help keep everything contained and keep the water, water quality at the, the levels we'd want um then like we've talked about before the boundary fencing even just the existing boundary not even including uh the safety areas that we would probably need to fence off to keep people away from edges but just uh improving the boundary fencing would be a pretty pretty substantial cost as well so i just i think there is a lot of opportunity there and I think I think we just have to find the right combination. We could also have the facility available for reservation if you wanted to make reservations and use the property for uh, you know canoeing, kayaking, or um, I think there's a few places I know other counties where they have nice facilities that they go and you can reserve it and have your uh, family reunions and so, and whatnot, and then you have uh, use of the grounds and the facilities. But I think there's a lot of opportunity. I think it just Trying to find the right fit that's you know and then is with the with the amount of projects and improvements i have coming up um to to take a million dollars of wild spaces money away from things that have already been backlogged i think it would be kind of a hard hard pill to swallow for us can i ask you a question that's off of the uh, jason thank you uh thank you very much uh for uh, your uh, thorough uh, Sure. Analysis of uh, what possibly a, a budget would be for this property. Um, uh, I, I know we're going to move into some public comments soon, but we've gone through uh, a few folks here uh, with, uh, of course, Andy's uh, overview and, and, and Charlie talking to uh, University of Florida. I think that was pretty straightforward. And uh, uh, obviously hearing comments, uh, uh, email comment from the uh, City of High Springs. Uh, we, we may have a few questions at this point. I would like to keep it short, if you all don't mind. I'm just going to go around the room and, and see if there's a, a burning question right now that uh, you may have. Uh, we will obviously come back and uh, discuss some more. But before we get a little bit too far along, I'd just like to go around the room and see what we got. Which, uh, I'll start with you, Jason, since you obviously have one. Well, it, and it deals with sort of this, this whole question that we're going at with the cost of, of getting it up and running. And I think the assumption is that you would get it up and running like it would be at build out or close to that, like a like a concessionaire, like an Inchituckney Springs or something like that is what I'm hearing. And I, I'm wondering, is, it, is, there, is there an option where you get it up and running at a much, much lower level where you just give have someone monitoring it and you have access and you have some rudimentary facilities, but that's it. And people bring their own stuff. They bring their own canoes and kayaks. You don't allow, you know, you have just someone making sure that someone doesn't show up with a, a 250 bath boat that's going to go or you know, an air boat or something. So that was my only question. Is there, is there an option where we can start it out at a much lower level? Um, and that's it. I think, Jason, I think that's a very viable uh, uh, question. And uh, uh, I think let's let's keep that in mind, and we'll come back to that. Um, and uh, let's see, uh, uh, Paul, you got a, anything 
want to. Yeah, is there the the option of purchasing the land and letting it sit for until the wild spaces money is all used up, and then let the county fund it with some other program? I, I can't answer that question. That's all. I'd say wild spaces is so critical for management and improving. So if you don't have that money, I mean, I don't see how the county's going to come up with money to do a million five of. Improvements. Yeah. Well, the county um, in the future might think this is a wonderful thing. And well, it's like, so you're rolling the dice to a degree. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, it, it, not so well, if they just decide never to do anything with it, then the birds could enjoy it. What is so, Brian? Go ahead. Uh, Charlie or Andy, um, what's the ordinance say about the timing requirements for a management plan uh, after acquisition? That that might be a we try to uh, get management plans done within a, a year of acquisition. Um, that doesn't mean that it has to be implemented no, right away. No, just have to create the management plan. Not at all. All right. The only other question that I had was about the, um, the state requiring reclamation, and um, you in intimated that an ownership change would potentially trigger that. Um, and while that doesn't sound particularly costly to me, if um, physical changes to the property aren't required, if it's just fencing or signage or something like that, but if uh, those slopes did need to be changed to make them more safe, presumably that would be a requirement imposed on the county and not on the prior owner. Negotiable. That all, all of that, I think, is a question mark that we we, are, we would be speculating on too much at this point. No, uh, yeah. I think some of that may be a point of negotiation, um, yeah. you know, in terminating the, uh, the lease and, and that type of thing. Um, some of it, you know, would be just requirements that we, we aren't aware of at this point because yeah. we haven't had that much discussion with the state. Uh, Susan. Um, well, this is sort of half baked, but if if the land were just left dormant, like Paul mentioned, versus if it was all the way up to a full-fledged, you know, recreation thing or whatever, what? And I, I can't, I don't know if he put it in the budget thing, but liability issues. I, I think whether it's Jason or, or whether it's our staff, that would be the primary concern. Um, while the property is just sitting there, it would have to be secure. Yeah. And if it was yeah. opened at all, I think you would have to have some type of on-site presence. Okay. I mean, the you know, the uh, potential dangers are just too much to just, you know, leave it open or to not uh, fully secure the site, you know, if, if you don't have it open. For so even if it was just left dormant, it would need to be fenced or eyeballed Certainly. on it or Certainly. something? Certainly. Okay. Yeah. How does the state deal with that? Like, it's, it's, it's something they have some of those, those lime rock cliffs. How do you deal with liability? For the sign up and if someone protects their stall, they... It's a fenced and secure facility with staff and, you know... And there is, a there is sovereign immunity, which which protects, you know, the entity of government to some degree. BJ? My only question, Jason, um, haven't we had kind of a bumpy ride with previous um, vendor leases, like Post Springs and stuff? Hasn't then been, been kind of a challenge? I mean, I would be concerned you buy this, put out a RFQ, and nobody responds, you know, I mean, because like you said, there's a lot of money up front and, you know, uh, you'd have to, you know, make sure you put improvements that are going to generate revenue. Have we had difficulties with concessionaires in the past? Uh, well, I have a, a background with the state parks and they do, they do a lot of these type of contracts. I think, you know, there's, there's ways you can put the contract in, and it would be a long-term lease so that it would be more attractive for someone, but you would be definitely targeting a bigger type of concessionaire uh, company that can come in and build these amenities and, and do the things on the property. Um, but smaller, yeah, you, you'd want to stay away from smaller. But um, to, to, to also answer the other question earlier, absolutely, you can, you can open this. I would say you'd still need to probably at least have a bathroom. We would have demolition, some fencing, I'd still need the staffing, but we could operate it as a very minimal use trails only like uh, birding and nature trails that we can do a lot of that in-house. The biggest expenses would be fencing and safety concerns, demolition, the restroom, of course, um, and the staff. 
staffing, but it would be much cheaper to do it that way. And then we could consider possibly, uh, you know, putting a vendor to actually rent kayaks, it's, you know, as a small contract that we do it like we have at Post Springs. So you could operate this at a more minimal uh, operation for sure. I just wanted to make sure like, we really don't know what we're gonna get into when we get out there. So there could be all kinds of things we run into. So I'd rather say this is if we had to take it over run it 100%, this would be worst case scenario. But obviously if we can find some kind of middle ground and say, okay, if we say, well, we wanna operate it and we're directed by this board to say, okay, why don't you look at doing it this way? And then we can sit there and fine tune everything and come back to you and say, okay, if we were to do it at minimal and just have some trails and some bathrooms and some trash cans and some picnic shelters and stuff like that. And the rest of it was just El Naturel. We can come back and give you a much more accurate figure. Uh, I see that uh, Bruce is with us. Uh, Bruce, do you have a question? No, I don't have a question. I, I, we, I've been listening to some very good information, though, and uh, uh, the information has helped me form some opinions. So thank you. Very good. Thank you very much. Uh, we're going to uh, move on now to the public comment. And uh, we have uh, Nigel uh, Rudolph here. Yes. Yeah, very right. good. Very good. And uh, we're going to let you uh, uh, discuss the, uh, the cemetery side, I believe. Yeah, I'll be brief. Um, my name is Nigel Rudolph. I'm an archaeologist with the Florida Public Archaeology Network Central Region. Um, my office is technically in Crystal River, but for the past year and a half, I've been working out of my office in, here in town um, at my house. I actually had an opportunity to go out and look at the cemetery today. Um, and I know we've been talking about sort of the physical landscape of the place. And I, I totally agree about the potential for awesome recreation. Um, but I can't really speak to that. I can speak to the cultural um, environment. And that one little square that has that, uh, that cemetery on it is extremely vital to protect. Um, I will most likely be part in some capacity of the governor's new uh, task force in documenting historic African-American cemeteries throughout the state. Um, if you're not familiar with this, uh, uh, Senator Janet Cruz and Representative Fentress Driscoll from Tampa um, proposed a bill a couple of years ago, got stalled out by um, the pandemic, but the governor just signed it uh, earlier this month, and they are going to form a 10-person task force to investigate, find, document African-American cemeteries throughout the state. Um, and I, like I said, I'll probably be part of that in some capacity. I've been working with uh, Karen Kirkman, who is the historian and president of the Historic Hale Homestead, on documenting. We've done about 25, uh, found about 25 historic, uh, black historic cemeteries in the county, um, along with the, uh, the historical commission. We've been working on that project. Um, and this is one of them. She documented this earlier, uh, probably about four years ago, five years ago, and got it on the Florida Master Site File. If you're familiar with that, that is a, a database up in Tallahassee that documents all prehistoric and historic archaeological sites, cemeteries, everything. Um, and these are little windows into history, these cemeteries. This is a little window into the community that was there. Um, it, I think it is our obligation if opportunities arise like this to protect these kinds of locations, because this is part of a lot of what kind of history. The earliest death date is 1881. Um, I didn't see that stone out there. Uh, it was documented back in 2005 uh, by Jim Powell Jr. with Alachua County Historic Records. Um, he did photograph that stone. Um, it's so overgrown. I actually have some pictures of, that I took today if anybody wanted to see. Um, Madeline. But yeah, you know, I don't know what else to say. This is part of uh, this is part of the history of our county. We 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 live on foundations of people that came before us. Um, the black community, particularly in High Springs, and they're still present in the in the area. Um, those are their their ancestors that are buried there. Um, and I think that alone, I know it's just one small fraction of a very large piece of land. And in that, it's unique, but it's not unique in the fact that uh, it's been abandoned. Um, and we see that all over the state uh, by just the growth of the Florida jungle encroaching on everything. You don't mow your lawn after a week nowadays. I mean, it's, 
it's bonkers. Um, but there's also, you know, systemic racism plays a part in it. Um, just abandonment, loss, neglect, all these issues, and these, these cemeteries are vanishing. Um, and I'm sure you've read about the Zion Cemetery in Tampa, which is kind of what set this all off for uh, Janet, Senator Janet Cruz. Um, but I support the acquisition of the property um, for all kinds of reasons. But the cultural reasons are definitely my, my, uh, my kind of forte. Wouldn't it be illegal for anybody to destroy that cemetery, even if the county does not own it? It would be illegal to destroy it, but it can be moved. Um, to be moved legally by uh, the property owner um, if there was another location, but that would be a whole other kind of um, situation where we'd have to bring in the state to, to uh, the Division of Historical Resources out in Tallahassee would have to have to find out about that and, and understand about that. But would there be any money for the state from the state to buy this property? Oh, that's a good question. I, I don't I can't answer that. How many acres? Does How many acres do you think is the cemetery uh, like site? One or two? Or yeah, it's approximately uh, three acres. Yeah, it's three, three, acres, acres, say, yeah. three acres. Thank you. And those are just a few of several stones that, that I was able to see um, and markers. I, it, it's extremely overgrown. Um, and some of them may already be gone since uh, 2005 when Jim Powell Jr. got out there and photographed it. The county has a wonderful website called the Wizard of Alaska County um, uh, Virtual Cemetery Project, and it documents all the cemeteries throughout the county, uh, including Asbury Cemetery. Um, so there's no uh, local family member group that was, wanted to take care of this particular site or making sure for the, for the future that it was uh, kept in a, an estate, a, a state that was uh, 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 not what it is today. Right. Uh, want and uh, ability are sometimes different, um, obviously, but um, the, there's a myriad of reasons why these cemeteries are abandoned. And that's such a negative, con uh, negative term, abandonment. Um, a big part of the reason in a lot of ways was the Great Migration played a part of it as folks left these cemeteries. Like I said, 1881 was the original birthday. People people left the South, and then families moved away. Uh, the only people that were taking care of it were elderly, and it's a host of different reasons why it could have been. And what is evident in those images is that the Florida will just encroach it. And when eyes stop getting on it, when trees start growing over it, it just, it, you forget about it. Um, and, but there's still family in the area, uh, descendants of the people that are buried there in the area. So I think they would be encouraged by the county's support in protecting their um, ancestors. Thank you, uh, Nigel. That was uh, yes, very, very well done, very informative. Uh, we have uh, uh, Sadek here. Thank, uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, and uh, uh, would you like to say some? Well, I was just wondering, is there any opportunity to partner with, like, Florida Forever? Or what are, aren't they the ones that bought Blue Springs, you know, in 2017? Yes. You were a part of that, you said. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, the state um, bought uh, Gilchrist Blue Springs. Uh, there's certainly um, possibilities of working either through, um, well, through the Florida Forever uh, program, the, you know, the um, conservation lands, or with uh, Florida Communities Trust, which is also funded through uh, Florida Forever. One other place, I mean, I was reading where um, the Anderson Memorial Park over in Vail was on it today, but it said uh, the Lachlan County Conservation Trust and Swanee River Management um, bought that. Um, it's not impossible. Um, their money is is typically tied towards uh, springs protection. They would have to look at this and make a determination that this was was critical for the protection of springs. And as Andy noted, uh, it is within um, a couple of spring sheds, 
so that's that's not out of out of the question either. Would that be for purchase funding? But it seems like the big ticket item here is, uh, you know. Yes. Um, what for, comes after for purchase? purchase yeah. Okay. Yeah, Florida Communities Trust does uh, supply um, funding for uh, management of sites as well, okay. or development of sites, not not so much management, but development. Yes. May I? Uh, yes, a few uh, comments. Yes. I'm Mary Helen Wheeler. Yes, um, thank you. Thank, thank you, Ms. Wheeler. I, I can answer about the church, the cemetery. It was owned by Asbury AME Church, and that church dissolved. It's no longer there, so it became part of the property that Ms. Doddick owned. Uh, there was also a middle school out there, and uh, Dr. St. Elmo Clark and her husband, John, are some of the, the owners of the land that are uh, adjacent to this property. And they have their family members that are in the cemetery and gave me the information that I have currently about, you know, who's buried out there and, you know, the different families that were um, interred out there. But, um, and, and I, my original thought about this property was that it would be more primitive um, you know, that we would have it maybe reservation only if we needed to in order. There's only one road in there and one road out. So it's easy to, you know, to determine who, who or who's coming and going out of that property. Um, the other thing that I wanted to, and then it's going out, oh, was Tom K here earlier? Did he get here? He was. Okay, good, good. He was well, here by the phone. He has a meeting in High Springs. High Springs is my area that, that I represent. And I've been working with the city of High Springs with, with these projects. And the one is the canoe outpost that he's gone yeah. up there now to take care of. Uh, I lived there for a while. And then the owner decided to sell it. So that's where we started brokering that the city of High Springs would take that on. And then this project, I got in touch with Ms. Audic right after I came on the commission. I saw it and thought that it might be an opportunity for this same district that I'm representing right off I-75. Um, but there are people who fish there now, anyway, whether they, they come on illegally. But Fish and Game is another opportunity. Uh, last week, uh, the Canadian team, you know, some of, you know, that, that would work with us on this. And the idea of, of the reclamation, um, I've talked to Steve Topstetter about this, and he's talked how happy about this, and it's not going to be as hard to do as what we might think in terms of what my thought was, if we could get the, the mining company to leave the lime rock that's already been mined there for us, that we could swap that out in terms of taking on the reclamation responsibility. Because from what I understand from Steve, it's not going to be that complicated. Uh, I talked to Ramon Gavarete, and he would love to have that lime rock. And uh, he has budgeted money to buy lime rock, just like that. So if we could use some of his budgeted money to purchase the lime rock that's already been mined, you know, that would help the cost of it as well. In terms of going forward with big ideas to make it functional, um, if we have time, I think to do it in stages would be the better way to do it. If we purchase it, then we can get the lime rock. I mean, Ramon said he could move it in a week. It could be gone in a week from the needs that they have throughout the county. Uh, we would all be heroes if we could somehow get a rich road staged out there with some of that lime rock. But I'm, I'm saying that there, um, you know, that there are partnerships that maybe you hadn't thought about yet. There are opportunities that we can use, you know, the resources there uh, in a whole different way than we even thought about. But from what I understand from Steve, they talked to the state, and uh, it would not be as cumbersome and that um, we don't have to, like Charlie said, be open right away, that we could do it in stages in a way that, um, you know, that the, the main thing is to purchase the property to make sure that the water is protected. And um, I, I think that, for me, that's the big thing. It's the water reservoir there uh, that we may need even someday. So uh, there you have it. I've, you know, I've, I've gone every angle that I can think of to try to make sure that you have, you know, as much information as I can possibly give you without uh, 
um, going too far. And I know that the county manager is very interested in this property as well. So thank you. Thank you. Me. Thank you, Ms. Wheeler. Thank you. That was very, very well spoken. Thank you. Um, well, we've heard we've heard from about uh, every uh, every source that we could uh, uh, for for this particular meeting that I think we could uh, do from of course from from the past meeting and then also this one. Uh, I I I've been going back and forth on this property, and uh, uh, but I'm. Are they in the public? Or any of these people come Mr. to the Mr. Gumper. The rest are staff. And oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Come to you, Mr. Gumper. Yeah. 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 Yeah
um, the setback from the waters would be um, an average of 150 feet, but no less than 100 feet. Um, and it did it did score a a higher score of potential for development. It scored a four out of five for potential okay. for development. So would this endanger water resources if it got developed like that? that You'd have fertilizer flowing in. They assured to put motor boats in it. Uh, it. Is there any power to say you can't do that? I mean, we don't own it. Record. There. It's that development removed by the county that couldn't, I don't know. What kind of leeway yeah, do we have? We have the rules of well, I hear like protection of the water, so I'm yeah. trying to figure out what does that mean. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's no different than any other open yeah. water body. Yeah. So well, I mean, is it special? I mean, is it different because it's a direct line to the aquifer or something? It's pretty deep. It is connected yeah. directly connected with the aquifer. Okay. But I don't think it's that water right. that you see there is aquifer. Yes. yes. All right. Yeah. I don't think it's ever stopped anybody from putting a boat in the motor. No. I just wonder if that increases the danger. Um, Bruce, did you have a Yes, th thank you. Thank you. Um, you hearing me. Hearing me. Sorry. It's not muted, though. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, it's the phone thing. You got to do the phone thing. Yeah, yeah. Am I, am I, do you hear me? You clear no, in the chat? Do you hear me? We can hear you in Zoom, Bruce, right. but I don't right, think Bruce, they can hear us in the room. Please. Oh dear, oh dear. Uh, Go ahead, Bruce. You, you can speak now, okay. Bruce. Okay. Um, having heard the discussion last week, uh, last month, and this month, and all of the information, uh, there is <laughs> so much going on. Of what if this one helped? What if that one helped? What if this organization or that governmental thing or so on and so forth? I, th I think it's beyond what the Land Conservation Board should be dealing with, and and uh, I would not I would not favor voting for this. I would let if if people from other organizations think that it's something to be pursued, let them pursue it. But I don't think I think it's just too far away from what we do. Thank you. Thank you, Bruce. Dwayne, I see you popped up. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. Sorry for my tardiness. Can you hear me? Yes, we hear you. Yeah. Have oh, you been okay. uh, online with us for a little while? Yeah. Um. Well, I came in and I tried to um, uh, cut the camera off because I didn't want to interrupt the group. Yeah. What we have right now, Dwayne, we have a, uh, uh, a motion with a second to Put the High Springs High Rock Mines LLC property on the eligibility pool, and we're having discussion right now. Okay. Um. You know, I know. Uh, you know, High Springs are one of those areas. Um. That probably you know that a lot of people are are trying to do things around hot springs such as you know uh save the springs and i think it's is very good i remember the property came up before and um we talked about it and um but i'm not i'm not sure you know that's one of uh, a property that as i kind of speak the same value that um mr the saint the person what's his name that just spoke i'm sorry Bruce. Bruce. Yeah, Bruce, you spoke. So I kind of, you know, um, feel the same way. All right, call the vote. I, I, I never got a chance. Jason, 
Go ahead, Jason. Uh, yeah. So um, I, w I would be much more willing to vote for this if it was um, bargain chair. Um, I don't have a huge problem with putting on the eligibility pool, but that'd be about the extent that I would put it on. Um, we've heard a lot of people talk, like uh, Ms. Wheeler, who said that she had a lot of people talking about it, but she didn't provide anything that's like a letter or anything from the county manager or anything like that. I would definitely want to have Steve come and talk to us, um, have the county manager say something, at least, you know, it would much, be much better if he would be able to commit money that's outside of our money. Um, but I would be much happier to uh, one put on bargain share as opposed to just a fee simple um, total purchase on our part, and two keep it at the eligibility pool. We didn't vote for it on the eligibility pool. Okay. Um, keep it at, at the eligibility pool level so that we can get more information coming through and see if there's other partners that sort of spring up because uh, that has happened in the past. Yes, it has. Uh, and and to keep it at the level that we talked about, not go full full nuclear on on developing it out, building it out. Excuse yeah, me. I want to. I don't know if there's any way we can. I, we can't I, put caps or I, limits I, I on what we, it, I, I, you I know. I think we have a motion. We have a second. It says, says put it on the eligibility pool. Yes, Andy. What? Oh no, I'm good. I actually all my questions have been answered. But I just want to say, like, if we could say our feelings toward this, that it not create a big financial drain, you know, on the program, I even think if it were. I think by putting it on the eligibility pool, it, it's like, Jason, it opens up the avenues for further discussion and, and see where we could possibly go with this property uh, in, in the future. It uh, doesn't mean it's going to happen. Uh, this year, it may uh, we keep properties on the eligibility pool for uh, how long? Forever. For forever. <laughs> it could be. Yep. I get on the eligibility. For the record, that was the in intent of my motion. Thank so, you. so I, I would actually make. I, I, I'm I'm thinking about making an amendment to his motion. We, yeah. well, you yes, to make it. <laughs> We're gonna have to vote on on. You have to withdraw or something. Yeah, this this takes priority. His. Why, why can't you amend another motion? I'm trying, to, I'm trying to think of the rules of order here. Um, Brian would have to let's, amend let's, it. Let's, yeah. let's hear what your suggestion is. I mean, uh, in the planning commission, we amend, we, we have. It's fine. I'm just want to make sure we're doing it correctly. You offer amendment, but the, Brian would have to accept it. So. Right. Yeah. Let's hear it. It's bargain chair. It's, it's not, and not to put it full, put on eligibility pool yeah, as, as a bargain chair. Purchase. I don't think there is such a thing. I think a bargain share is strictly for the priority pool nomination wouldn't be el eligibility pool is just to indicate that the property is eligible for the program. Okay. I didn't know that was. Have you ever seen an, an eligibility? But an eligibility pool allows discussion and one discussion topic would be are you willing to do bargain share and so if it say no then we're done. I mean that would be the way I would think it would go. I mean, it wouldn't be that. Well, anyway, that's, that's my that's my my amendment. I'm going to vote no if it's not on there. Shall we? Is y'all voting? So you've offered an amendment, Brian. Have you have you are we willing to amend your uh, motion based on that discussion from Jason? Mr. Chair, Charlie, uh, just to, to try to help uh, clarify, I don't believe that we have bargain share attached to any um, properties in the eligibility. eligibility pool, but we do certainly at, at the um, priority right. pool. That is my understanding, and I respectfully ask you to reconsider the motion as it stands, and I wholeheartedly agree with you. We have a second. You don't have to. You just move forward. Well, mm -hmm. I don't want you to vote against it because you don't like the way that the motion was stated. Well, I may have changed my mind. Charlie, Charlie is very persuasive. <laughs> All right. When he told me, uh, I'll chair. Call. We, uh, let's call for a vote. Let's call for a vote on the motion uh, on the floor, which is and which has had a second to move the High Springs Limery Mines property LLC to the eligibility pool. All those in favor say aye. Perhaps raise your hand. Aye. 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 Okay. So we got, can we call them out? It would be good to call them out, Holly. I have 
Jason West, Russ, and Brian. I. And okay. Dwayne. Is that an I, Dwayne? And Sue. No, no, he shook his head. Dwayne, is that I or no? That's a no. Okay. Thank you. Are so are yeas are? So Susan, you are a no. No. Oh, no, I'm an awesome. yeah. yeah. I'm oh, really. Yeah. I can't really. <laughs> okay. Tap it. Okay. So I have Jason West, Russ, Brian, and Susan as I. Am I a voting member this week? Uh, actually, you're not. Okay. <laughs> so I have Jason, Russ, and Bre Russ. Brian and Susan is I. Thank you, Russ. Thank you. Okay. Opposed. Like side. Nay. Nay. Bruce. Dwayne. Four four. Uh, Five four. DJ and Paul. Actually, because I'm sorry, I wasn't thinking. Amanda's gone. You are a voting. So I'm sorry. Sorry. Wes is a voting member because of Amanda's vacancy. That's, I just temporarily forgot about that. So that's five, four. Five, I. The nays were Paul, BJ, Dwayne, and Bruce? Yes. And we're missing Ed and Brett. Brett, yes. yeah. Uh, the, uh, the uh, as I understand it, the motion carries uh, with a uh, five to four. Is that correct, uh, 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 Secretary? That's correct. Thank you very much. Anything further regarding this property? Hearing none, we move on to new business. Wesley. Yep. Uh, I just found the love. Oh, yes, that's you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I am briefly here and now resigning. I got a job at NC State. A contract did not come through with the University of Florida. So I uh, will not be a resident of Alaska County by the next meeting, which means I must resign or just be removed. So I will resign. <laughs> Sorry, Tigo. It's fun to watch. Last issue. Sorry to have such a brief tenure here, but uh, I, I learned a lot and I really appreciate all the insights that y'all have given me. Um, it's interesting to see the, the mechanics behind all the properties that I've been using for the last nine years. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. And what will you be doing at NC State? Uh, postdoc. My, my alma mater, by the way. Okay, okay. So, I'm there as a postdoc hired researcher looking at climate change influencing, influencing game bird populations. Very good. And then we right. tie that into a lot of things like uh, composition of natural areas and population growth and hunters and all kinds of other variables that play into that. But exciting stuff, good stuff. Excellent, excellent. Uh, thank you. Thank, thank you for, for your uh, tenure here, uh, Wesley. It was uh, appreciated, and uh, we certainly appreciated your comments that you had during many of our votes. Uh, very, very well taken. Thank you very much. And we look. We hope you have a very uh, uh, successful time up there in the uh, ACC country. Absolutely. That's, uh, <laughs> oh, oh, horrible. Uh, <laughs> 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 got a flag hanging from a tree in the front, in the front driveway. Look at that. Very good. Very good. Well, thank you very much, Wesley. Uh, that uh, now brings us up to the uh, vice chair position. And... Uh, we certainly need a vice chair to uh, to continue uh, our our meetings. Uh, and um, the um, uh, Andy is the is it, is it a, it's an open position for anybody to volunteer. It, yes. And if I assume if we had more than one volunteer, we would then go to a vote. Is yes. That correct. Correct. Thank you very much. Uh, I I understand that uh, Brian. Block here would like to volunteer for the position, and that's uh, very, very uh, commendable. Thank you very much. 
Uh, do we have uh, anyone else who wants to throw their shoes or hats in the ring? I'm only doing it to get out of being the secretary. Oh. Just, kidding, just kidding, just kidding, just kidding. But that's what creates a new problem, doesn't it? <laughs> anybody, anybody there uh, on the screen? No, I see some head shaking. No, no. Do we need a motion? Yeah, do we vote him? Uh, so what do we need to do here, Andy? We need to... Uh, yeah. I make a motion to make Brian Block the new... Vice chair. Uh, we need a motion to make Brian Block the uh, the new vice chair of the Land Conservation Board. Uh, do we have a uh, uh, a second? Yeah, I second. Second. Thank you, Susan. All those in favor, a roaring aye. Uh, aye. 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 <laughs> aye. 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 Appreciate the vote of confidence, folks. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. No nays. Hearing none, hearing none, the uh, the motion carries. Thank you, Brian. Thank you for stepping up. My pleasure. We'll see. Um, oh. Jason, I had a quick follow up to the to the Lime Rock mine piece for for the for the representative. Yes. When we put on eligibility eligibility poll, I had a hard time saying that tonight. Um, that basically means that. They're gonna they're gonna work on its own, and it probably would be really really good if if the landowner and the the, the commissioner uh, Wheeler would sort of you know do some light work too because that means it's it's just kind of there now, and we and us, us choosing not to go forward with it probably means that we need more information or something needs to change. More information, more opportunity, perhaps. Um, Continuous um, uh, uh, analysis of the uh, potential for the property. Yes, I personally would be most interested to hear about what the condition of funding is with FCT and uh, what cycle this might be eligible for. Um, yeah, I will um, team up with with Jason, and he and I will investigate, and we will report back. And I might be so bold to say your predecessor might have some good ideas. He was a wizard with FCT grants. Um, I'm actually going to leave since I don't. There's, there's no need for a form. I don't think. I think we still uh, have one without you. Uh, yes, we Jason. Do. Yes, we do. Okay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Iron. I love your acquisition update. Very short for me. Oh, good. I didn't say that. I, 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 I love you, but I didn't know yeah, secretary. I, 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 <laughs> uh, that's true. Uh, I can fill that right yeah. now. Uh, we do have a vacancy for secretary position, so uh, do we have anyone who would like to volunteer for the secretary position? I volunteered, Ed. <laughs> you guys are so timid. We used to do that all the time. If you, if you weren't at the meeting, you were a very good chance you were going to get stuck with something you don't want. Or put it in the motion. Scott will learn him. I'm not. I wait for him to come back. <laughs> so okay. Table. Right. table. We can do that. Anyone present? We will. Volunteer. <laughs> <laughs> Already held. I'd feel more comfortable if, if we had a full, because then you, you you don't feel completely guilty about not like. Correct. Well, for, right. Furthermore, I'm still on the hook for the minutes for tonight. That's why we don't have to. Yes, we can table. Yeah. Yeah. We, we will, well, we that'll will, need to be the first agenda item, though, for next meeting. We will, right? yes, we will, we will table it, and it'll be one of the first agenda items for our meeting next uh, next uh, month or month after. Well, one thing I will propose for secretary, yes. I've been on board to do this. It's like a round robin, so every every other meeting, it's the it's the, the next person up gets the the burden. But anyway, that's just my thought. Cause, that's interesting, um, especially since they're not it, the minutes have been sort of they they haven't need, needed to be. In, in my new shift. That's true. Just yeah, it's a good point. So, anyway. Thank you, Jason. Thank you very much. All right. You're out of here. Thank you very much. Uh, staff updates, Byron. Acquisition updates. Yep. Uh, good to see everybody. Um, thanks, guys. It was great. Thanks, Thank you. Jason. Thank you. Had good, good luck with the new job. Thank you. Um, we. 
Uh, the acquisition team has, continues to have several of our ongoing projects that we're working on. Um, some are under contract, some are we're working to get under contract. Um, the, the big news today is we got in a contract yesterday for the Jefferson property, which is on uh, Hickory Pond, and which Hickory Pond is between Little Lake Santa Fe and Lake Alto. So we already have lots of um, land under conservation there, the county, the water management district in that region. So that's uh, 293 acres. Most of that property is, is Hickory Pond and a lot of wetlands. All the path property, I think, is probably wetlands. Slightly, I just checked it, it's slightly less than half is, is in Hickory Pond and the associated wetlands. And, uh, and the purchase price is uh, just over $1.3 million. Um, so Kevin is sending the contract through the agenda review process. Um, so hopefully we'll, we'll, this will be on the county commission agenda for August 10th for commission approval. So that's the next Very cool. Point. Very good. That's Excellent. Fun. The Thank you. nerdy question, is Hickory Pond included in the, in the sovereign submerged land body of water of Little Lake yeah. Tenfe? Is not. I think the information we have today is that it is private. Yes. It is, it is you you contacted the Bureau of Surrey. Yep. Oh, really? Wow. Oh, that's surprising. Yep. It's actually very interesting. Yeah. And that's like historical research. you got to go way back and see what happened. It's not part of it. wasn't described in the original government surveys. Yeah. It wasn't meandered. Right. Then it's a wow. crapshoot. It's not. Yeah. Huh. Fascinating. Uh, Okay, uh, very good. Uh, thank you, Byron. Um, other business, uh, our next meeting date is set for July 22nd, and uh, of course, July is July, and a lot of people are, are running all over the place. Yes, Susan. Uh, what, can I ask the status of, like, the, we have several vacancies, or one vacancy? The LPD, or? now we have two. Two vacancies, okay. Yes, right. um, so I have advertised it, and we have um, probably either nine or now ten applications submitted. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. And so I closed it today, and I'm going to submit that to the July 13th BOCC agenda, um, and hopefully they'll pick two, and we will be full, fully staffed again. I don't know how much it matters, but are these citizen at large or natural resource vacancies? They're both citizen at large. Um, okay. But we have, we have a mix of applicants. So. Cool. Good. Yeah. Very good. Thank you. Uh, well, July being July again, um, uh, I'm not going to be here. Of course, I can zoom in, uh, which is you know fine. And I'm sure other people have other ideas for their ju July escape. Uh, so, will we have a quorum? Is the big question. And there's no sense setting up a meeting if we're going to be, you know, definitely no quorum or like on the edge. So can the chair chair the meeting from we, from Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Yes. I can chair from distant places. Okay. Uh, the question though will be whether we have a quorum or not. And of course we can change that date to uh um you know adjust, but you know, it's hard to put this many folks and what's get the date? The 22nd of July. Is there much, are you going to be doing any evaluations or anything? Is there much to even put on the agenda? We have not yet received any new nominations. Um, we certainly could still. The probably drop dead for us is three weeks prior to the meeting. That's pretty soon. Um, Why don't we post just uh, skipping it? Yeah. yeah. Just go to August. Yeah. <coughs> um, I, I would like then for the, um, for y'all to, uh, do we have to make this a motion to change that date, or we just change we just change it? I think we just change it. Yep. Yeah. Right. I mean, uh, <laughs> <laughs> to remove the July meeting I, is what you're proposing, okay. sir. To remove the July meeting, that's what you're yes. proposing. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, since we're not going to have any uh, very strong possibility of no acquisition uh, or uh, um, uh, properties to uh, review, and along with uh, everybody's out. So that would make it the uh, August 26th. What if something crops up in the next week? Well, then Andy can have, yeah. have a long time to write up their evaluation. 
Right, I mean, that is the flip uh, of it. It would depend, you know, timelines are kind of long term anyway. Nothing My memory is not that good, but I don't recall too much of that. Yeah. Something popping up and it's rare, very rare. That has to be done. Yeah. Um, there's been at least one since I've been here that had a very pushing, pressing timeline that um, ended up being taken out from our consideration almost immediately. So the timeline was more pressing than even it seemed. <laughs> I have a question about the the low number of parcels being nominated. Do County people know that this program exists and that they can nominate things, and should that be advertised with, like, uh, with a, a, a detailed list of what kind of property we're looking for and what kind we're not looking for? Um, I believe we that there, we could certainly request a press release from communications, just making folks aware. Sure. Um, I mean. We get the word out as we can. You know, we do get inquiries along and along. And so I probably in the last 30 days have sent out one or two nomination forms, you know, just based on, on inquiries. Mm -hmm. But, you know, sometimes, sometimes people, they look at the matrix, they look at, you know, the information we send, and they, they determine that their property isn't suitable, that type of thing. So Yeah, and, and there's always the danger of having a bunch of people trying to get rid of land that don't fit at all. Yeah. So that's why I think any advertisement should go along with saying we're looking for big pieces that are wild, that are adjacent to pieces already publicly owned or managed and or whatever you want to make up for Is there any well, outreach to realtors? There's like because the, everything is for sale, it seems like right now. <laughs> well, the, the the market is strong. I yeah. Mean, the market is I strong. Know. There's a lot of interest out there for rural lands and uh, and and I the program is competing with that. And well, I just wonder if you guys, um, just a uh, question, if you... If things calm down, it may... Frankly, we haven't had a shortage of properties to work on. Yeah. We have, you know, an active acquisition list that technically has about 120 properties on it. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we are often able to check back with with landowners or were contacted by landowners who had been involved in the program in the past and fell off for some reason and have come back in. Um, with the projects that we've got working right now, if all of them hit and went through the uh, fruition, we would be able to spend all of the money that we currently have available. But there might be a better project than one that there certainly is. could. And I think that I think that getting information out is a great idea. Mm -hmm. When it comes to saying these are the properties we want, these are the properties we don't want. I mean, we can talk about you know the broad mission of the of the program, you know, for water resources, and wildlife habitat. Yeah. To get much more than that, I think what we might want to do is bring back some wording to you all, and let you guys vet, you know, what we would we would put out there, and. I can be fine. You know, make sure that you can endorse what we say there. Yeah. Then maybe we, you know, we could we could work with the communications office to, you know, to get that that word out. Mm -hmm. So that'd be good. Very we'll, good. We will work on that. I'm I'm hearing a consensus that y'all would like us to do that. Yes. Okay. And there's FOMO, right? <laughs> Fear of missing out. That's yeah. true. You're <laughs> in touch with Talk hey, all the time, right? Oh, sure. Whole job is to just find. Right? Yeah, and I can I can talk about that. You know, Alachua Conservation Trust. I'm a contract employee to the county. I'm an employee of Alachua Conservation Trust, and um, the Alachua Conservation Trust staff is meeting out. In, you know, they're out in the county and beyond Alachua County, meeting people constantly, and they do call me when when they run across someone who seems like a, someone who might be interested. And our electric conservation, electric county, I'm sorry, <laughs> ACT staff, they have the nomination forms, they have their versed in the ACF program, so whenever they think good overlaps, there's a potential interest, they try to funnel it toward me or, or to the, into the program. And, yeah, um, and ACT is a good partner to help the county.
County, um, you know, get outreach letters out. We're actually doing some of that right now. And I suspect in a year or so, we're going to start getting these projects where they're match funding coming through, so we're going to get sort of a different flavor of property. It's, yeah, it's very possible. Um, yeah, and, you know, if you all, you know, are out there running into people, you know, you can also act as an ambassador and tell them how to get the nomination form or just tell them to call me. And call you? Yeah. I mean, I got one today. Seriously? Yes. All right. Yeah. That's part of what I can call any of Okay. Yeah. Him? I mean, I, I, he's the, he's the which one? Conduit. Okay. That's true. All right. That's true. <laughs> Very good. Uh, That's good uh, to know. Any any other uh, just open discussion here? Um, uh, if, uh, hear, hearing none, I'm going to uh, ask for a motion to uh, for the, uh, the August meeting. date is what? Paul. The August date. Oh, August 26. 26. I motion to cancel the July 2021 meeting. Very good. We I'll second that. Second. Thank you, Brian. All those in favor? Any other further discussion on that? Hearing none. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Hearing none, uh, we are moving the meeting to August 26th. Thank you. Um, and then we need a motion to adjourn, unless there's some public comment. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, uh, motion to adjourn. Maybe uh, uh, just make sure there's nobody online. Uh, that wants I'm to. sorry, I'm turning my back to the all. I didn't mean to, but. Uh, uh, Bruce Duane, motion to adjourn. I already have any, any anything else? Or public comment, Dave Hankins. Oh, oh. D Dave is on. Any other? Uh, any, any public comment? He's connecting to audio. Oh, right. All right. Yeah. Oh. Okay. All right. I motion to adjourn. Thank you, uh, BJ. Motion to adjourn. I need a second. A second. Thank you, Paul. Any further discussion on the adjournment? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Hearing none, motion has, uh, the uh, motion is passed and we are adjourned. Thank you, folks. Thank you all for listening. Despite the rain. Yeah. yeah. So I, I do have. I think Jason is reading the team.